we join public housing and community housing multi-use together to create a single register for people to apply for social housing. A client will only have to apply for housing once using a consistent, a consistent housing application form and a visibility policy which is currently being developed. The idea is to make it easier for people to access housing options. We also have Steve Sakos from Community Housing Federation of Victoria to discuss the implications this might have on people with disability accessing appropriate housing. So please welcome Tony and Steve. Thanks for inviting me today. Um, I'm Tony Newman and um, I work in the operations division within the Department of Health and Human Services. And if you struggle to understand our structure, I think we've just announced our sixth restructure in the last three years. Um, but the good news for me is that uh, I've got a really strong background in, in housing. I've worked in the community sector and in the department. and. Um, so uh, that, our work continues regardless of the structure changes. It's also great to be uh, co-presenting with Steve um, Stakos today. We do a lot of work together um, and uh, I think um, what we should present should be very complimentary. Uh, I'm going to talk about the register itself and then I think Steve's going to get to more of the, the practicalities. Okay, so the Victorian Housing Register was announced by uh, Minister Foley at the end of September last year. And we, uh, he actually launched it in the first week of September this year. So in terms of government, that's actually um, an amazing achievement. And it's very much a partnership between uh, the community uh, housing sector, the homelessness sector, and uh, the department. And, and we're very focused on the partnership being important. Uh, one of the key drivers from the Minister's point of view, and I think uh, for all of us, is that there are uh, 42 housing providers in Victoria and each of them has their own application and access process. So if you or anyone you've worked with is trying to navigate that system, that's incredibly complicated. And um, even with public housing, which I've run myself, um, it's very hard to understand how you get access and how priorities get sent. So the purpose, as the Minister said, was let's have a single way that people apply, a common way in which people's needs are um, determined, and um, all of the community housing organisations and public housing working in that same set of arrangements. Um, so just to give you a bit of a sense of scale, um, there's 62,000 public housing properties and there's about 10,500 community housing properties, although Steve and I could probably debate those numbers for about five hours, because it depends how you count it. But I think that gives you a sense of what we're talking about. So in terms of access for a client, um, you can see that about 80% roughly is public housing currently, and about 20% is community housing. So having a single way to get there is really important. Um, one of the things that uh, this government's doing that's very important is they're not just thinking about long-term housing. So they're thinking about how does a person who has a housing need get assisted if they're homeless, um, if they're at risk in the private rental market. And this is a schematic looking at the fact that when someone um, is seeking assistance, they should have a common assessment process and that should not just look at their housing needs, but look at what other holistic needs they might have to get um, an outcome. Um, sort of with that previous uh, schematic, what we're now looking at is, so the, here's a big vision about how the system should work. So where are we doing the initial work to test that? And they're called launch sites. So the three launch sites are Brimbank Melton, um, Hume Moreland and Inner Gippsland. And they're the places where we're starting to think when a person um, approaches a very diverse service system, how do they get a common uh, uh, approach to their needs being assessed and pathway? In terms of implementing the register, 
um, there's four main steps in the process. So the first thing that happened was that the um, public housing waiting list has converted into the structure of the register. And, and people were told their application was converting, but they didn't need to take any action themselves. So that's now occurred. So when people apply now, it's not called public housing, it's called the Victorian Housing Register. And I'm going to talk about a bit of how it's structured, which is a bit different to how it's been in the past. Um, there's some legislation to allow um, information sharing between um, community organisations and, and ha public housing, and that's in Parliament right now. It's passed the lower house, and it's in the upper house, and hopefully will pass before Christmas. And at that point, community housing organisations will start to apply to use the IT system to directly start selecting off the register. And at that point, their applications will get merged with the public housing applications. So if you uh, individually or in supporting um, someone you work with have lodged housing applications in the past and you've lodged them with three different organisations, we will bring them together into one application and it'll be on the basis that it's the best fit. So let's say somebody applied and they were living in the private rental market um, and they applied with us. And then they applied with Housing Choices and it was quite disability focused what in fact they were seeking. We'd look at those two applications together and say, what's the correct application? Which one best expresses the person's needs? And then we will tell them. So we think that this is actually going to take us until about the end of August next year. There are 40,000 public housing applications in there and there are 15,500 community organisation applications and we have to look at every one individually to make sure we get it right. Uh, in terms of the structure, um, the register in many ways does look like the public housing structure, but there are a couple of, of subtle changes. So emergency management only ever happens if we have a bushfire or that type of disaster. The first big change is up until now, unless public housing was knocking your building over to redevelop it, you didn't have a high priority to get relocated. So if a person um, you know, had an event in their life that led them to actually needing um, modifications, significant modifications, experiencing family violence and was a current tenant, that wasn't prioritised over homelessness. In the new register, the um, to look at the public housing at the moment, social housing more broadly, and um, so the biggest group there that jumps out right now is family violence. So they've gone from a low priority to a very an application under the supported housing part of the register is are they getting assistance around acquired brain injury so it's gone from the program to the client what is the client need the primary need that's being addressed when we implemented the um, register sort of still starting how it would deal with people who needed a capital in going so at the moment, 
uh, you'll see you can apply saying they're an NDIS client, but shortly you'll be able to say they're an NDIS, NDIS client who needs major modifications to make it really clear of which, which group they fall into. Um, in terms of what's happening with the application process, um, it's not really changing uh, if the person's homeless or if it's a support provider who's lodging the application, that continues. Um, in terms of community housing organisations, they will also be able to approve people to the register. So it won't just be the department saying you're eligible or not eligible. Community housing organisations can also do that. Um, the housing call centre, if you ever lodge an application and you want to take one important tip away from today, send it to the housing call centre because that's where the data capture happens. So if you lodge it at a local office, they'll send it to the housing call centre. So that's, that's important for us. Our local offices, they prioritise the assessment of people with higher level needs. So people applying on the basis of a disability should be being managed through a local housing office, that application, in the area that person's currently living. Now that's important if they need to make contact with them. And our team centrally has a small team, which Natasha, who's with me today, and she's like the governance process for the register. So if there's questions about policy or eligibility, um, it's Natasha's team that arbitrates those. Um, there's two ways that applications can be lodged. The first is there's now an online application, so it's electronic. Um, clients can go into that through MyGov and lodge their own applications. Community organisations can also register to do them online. If you do one a year, don't do it online. <laughs> if you do five or ten a month, absolutely do it online. It, it will support you much better in what you're doing. Still the paper application, and that paper application is also up on the website. Um, and there's just some, uh, and we've left the package here, so there's, there's just some ways um, to actually access those uh, information on the paper forms. Um, so um, the other point this is making is if you're an agency lodging an application um, and you're having some difficulties, there is a, um, and you're doing it online, there's actually a helpline. So if you say, I can't work out how to um, submit this, I, I push the button, it doesn't work, you can actually ring that helpline and the helpline will say, okay, what you need to do is X, Y, or Z. So that pretty well covers like a walkthrough over the top. So um, I think, um, what if, Steve, you come and chat and then we can take some questions jointly and pretty typically we'll... I've probably seen Tony present PowerPoint presentations. I've lost count how many times now. So I, I could have probably given that uh, that uh, PowerPoint by this stage. But um, my name is Steve Stakos, and I work for the Peak Body for the not-for-profit community housing sector. And um, Tony mentioned the name of one of our agencies, Housing Choices Australia. Um, you might be familiar with a number of our agencies particularly the housing associations. If you've had anything to do with Community Housing Limited or Aboriginal Housing Victoria or possibly one of the other agencies like Yarra Community Housing or Port Phillip Housing Association, you'll know that every agency has a very different process. And so with that in mind, um, the community housing sector has a joined with the department as a partner in the implementation of the Victorian Housing Register because we see as well from a client perspective this isn't the best way to run an access system. I'm not going to repeat everything that Tony said but what I will say uh, is uh, how this is going to work from a client's perspective and also 
if you're if if you're working at an agency and supporting a client, how it will change for you. Um, the most important thing that's going to happen is that it's going to be one application, and that one application is going to provide uh, a whole gamut of opportunities for clients to access housing, both in the community and in the public system. Um, that application system is already live and operational, and people are hopefully getting access to the community housing sector already through the register, through what we what we call an, um, a referral system that is managed by the department. Until the legislation is passed, the Victorian community housing sector won't be able to go straight into the register and allocate directly. So we have to go through this um, other system. What's really going to be um, a slight change for our members to get used to is that keeping track of every client is going to be part of the business, the day-to-day -day business of filling vacancies. So if, if your disability support agency has nomination rights into a community housing property, um, prior to making a recommendation to a community housing organisation um, to, to have somebody housed in that nomination property uh, when a vacancy arises, that person should be registered on the Victorian Housing Register um, so that when it comes time for that person to be housed, it's a simple process for the community housing provider to make the allocation straight from the register. They can um, find, the, find the applicant's name upon your recommendation and then house them straight away in that property. I think that's correct, Tony. Um, so, so the Victorian Housing Register should not upset or should not change those nomination relationships between community housing organisations and disability support agencies. Because ultimately, one of the main aims of the Victorian Housing Register is to have successful tenancies. And one of the best ways to ensure a successful tenancy is established and maintained is for the support to be um, provided as part of that tenancy. And that's why it's so important in those, um, in those nominated properties to make sure that we continue to have those pathways through um, into, into the system. The legislation, um, once it is passed, will provide an opportunity for community housing agencies um, to have access to one consolidated list. And that will also mean that for uh, access points, and even for disability support agents who opt in to use the system, um, they'll be able to effectively manage an application. Um, and when, when a client touches base again and comes back to see where their application's at, you'll be able to look it up with their consent, see if it's current, and then lodge any particular changes that need to be made, which may change their priority or may change their need in terms of what kind of um, in what kind of property that they need. Uh, for instance, um, when if they registered for a property at a particular point in time with a specific set of uh, physical needs for the property and that changes over time, you'll be able to lodge that update with the, um, with the register and that will be able to be facilitated through the good management of those applications. Um, what it will also provide for the for the client and for the support sector is a better understanding of the policies and procedures. So at the moment, as Tony said before, when you've got 42 agencies in a system all operating off different policies and procedures, that creates a lot of um, difficulty in navigating the system and a difficulty in understanding what's happening. Now, Whilst every agency is going to maintain their own um, policies, the good thing is, is that the Victorian Housing Register will have a single set of policies and they will be transparent and they're already all online and accessible um, through the funded agencies channel um, and you can review those policies um, at your leisure. I'm sure you've got 
plenty of time up your sleeves, not, uh, to be able to go and read these many pages of um, operational guidelines. But what they will do is they will provide a clear set of direction for you to be able to know how your client will fit into these particular categories and how they'll be able to access housing through the register. The important part of the Victorian Housing Register, I think, um, is going to be the priority access. And that is, uh, that is what's going to... At the moment, there's about 10,000 applicants sitting on that um, segment of the, wait of the Victorian Housing Register. And that is the most important um, category as far as it's been um, identified by the Minister as people uh, in the greatest need should have priority access to vacancies when they arise, which means homeless with support, supported housing, special housing needs, priority transfers and emergency management will be effectively the first cabs off the rank. Um, what, we will, uh, what we probably need to wait for is to see how the interaction between the NDIS and the housing sector is going to happen effectively. Um, and I, I'm sure um, there's still a lot of work to, to do on that. Um, but from the understanding that we have, there's not going to be a lot of housing dedicated money that will flow through the NDIS. Um, and so there'll be um, a great amount of need, but there won't be a great amount of packages for people um, unless it's at one particular end of the spectrum, which will mean that there will be um, quite a demand put on the social housing system to be able to meet the, the housing needs of NDIS recipients who aren't getting that housing supplement. Um, so Tony mentioned before um, a number of things, one of which was that we could um, take a lot of questions um, and I think um, I don't think Tony's left out a lot but I think if there are questions about the day-to-day -day running of the Victorian Housing Register and um, I think we'll be able to take those and certainly I can answer it from a community housing perspective and, and Tony from the department's perspective. Thank you. Just quickly, if you want to ask a question, we we'll ask you to raise your hand, and then someone will come around with the microphone. Okay, so we'll start taking questions now. Um, my name is Alpha, and I'm from Action on Disability within Athenic Community. And I was just asking, will there be any changes in the waiting list? Um, there are people that have been waiting for 10 years, 7 years. And will the new register um, bring, you know, any changes to the waiting list or will it be the same thing? Uh, well, perhaps I should answer that question. <laughs> this is fantastic. He answers the politically <laughs> controversial things on the public service. So, uh, from the community housing sector's perspective, the Victorian Housing Register isn't going to change the length of time people will be waiting for housing. It will only change the access to the housing that is currently available. Um, what that will mean from the Minister's perspective, I think, is uh, more transparency about who the community housing sector is housing. And as you know, as you may know, uh, our program is um, is made up of allocations to people from priority, but also to people from the register of interest who have less priority. Um, and the department, I think, between 85 and 90 percent of their allocations go to people from priority, whereas ours is certainly not that high. Um, supply of additional public housing and community housing properties is really important um, and it's something it's it's going to have to be managed through a different process not the Victorian housing register um, but we understand there will be 
an announcement from the government before Christmas, it might be a Christmas present for all of us, with some housing related announcements. Yesterday, the Minister for Housing announced a $200 million program to upgrade 2,500 public housing properties and hopefully increase 10% stock numbers through that upgrade process. The community housing sector will be part of that. We don't know in what way, shape or form, but where the community housing sector has been able to work with government to deliver new properties, we've made sure there has been a, a proportion, and I'm sure this is the same for department delivered properties, there is always a proportion of universal access properties that will be suitable for um, your clients to access. Now, whether or not it's going to mean that there's going to be a quicker allocation, I don't think so. Um, Community Housing Federation estimates that we probably need to build 30,000 properties yesterday to be able to do that, and that's something that's not within the financial capability at the moment of the government or, or, or our sector. Um, so I, I agree with everything Steve said. Um, there, has, there hasn't been substantial investment in this state for a fair period of time. Um, a couple of things that probably are important um, at a practical level. Firstly, um, people think that access for people who need full or major modified property is governed by the structure of the register. It's actually governed by the number of those properties that exist. So one of the things that uh, public housing has done and the, the register will, will continue is that where we have a fully modified property or a major modified property, that doesn't go to the next person on the waiting list. It goes to the next person who needs that type of property. So in, in your lobbying space, sometimes people want to change the structure of a, a waiting list or a register it's actually the supply, if it's full or major modifications, that determines who gets, who gets allocated that property. Um, as, as Steve said, uh, I think um, we've probably had uh, a pretty tough five years um, and um, we are, even on our side of the fence, uh, hopeful because people who work in housing are pretty typically pretty passionate and you probably get the sense of my feeling about that. Um, that will get something substantial. The, um, the um, you know, Premier has said it will be before Christmas and uh, I think as Steve indicated from yesterday's announcement, the announcements will be quite broad. So if you're seeing an advocacy role, um, I'd be suggesting that the time to be taking up that role is very quickly once the announcements are made because there's not a um, there's not a blueprint that's sitting here of what exactly is going to happen. So there is opportunity um, in a strategic way to maybe help shape that. Uh, I think we've also got a, a, a new state disability plan in the offering and I'm assuming that also will be looking um, at housing. Uh, one off the record comment is that New South Wales um, estimations of how many NDIS clients will apply for social housing because they also have a combined list. Um, if we went pro rata, our priority list would double. So it's a fantastic thing for people to get the opportunities, but as Steve indicated, how then the housing supply gets delivered is a massive uh, challenge, and I think the Steve, the Productivity Commission um, made its point about NDIS that there needed to be a very substantial uh, investment at a Commonwealth level if there was any hope of getting there. Now that, sorry to be political, but that doesn't look like it's on the horizon, but that's a really critical component of it because housing is a Commonwealth state responsibility, not just a state responsibility.